All right, we're gonna start on the barn for our barn door project since uh, the weather kind of took a shit on me. Um, today's been it's Saturday. It's been a kind of a screw off day, honestly, in a way, because um, for the most part, it's been running around chasing stuff to get started on this. I had to go pick up a saw and got Granddad's jackhammer. And then I got down here and started laying stuff out. Realized I didn't have a framing square, so I had to run into the hardware store in town and get a framing square, which had just about shit a brick. It's a Empire tool, made in USA. I saw that, said, shut up, take my money. Um, so I, dad, we came and talked and Kind of got a game plan. Um, gonna come out, basically start at this seam of the block. So the first, basically the first block in from the door here. And then the first block in from the window here, which is gonna be the edge of the new door. Um, well, actually this is gonna be the edge of the new door. So we'd be half a block in, which would put us, yeah. So, we're a full block in from what's going to be, because this would be the edge, so we're a full block in right to here, uh, which should give me a 158-inch doorway, roughly, or no, 158-inch overall center to center on the, on the uh, grout lines, if I remember right. Give me a minute here. Sorry to make you dizzy. We're gonna go from there to yeah. So basically, 158 and a half grout line to grout line, and then the edge of the door will be there and here. show that'll get me a basically 10 and a half foot door 126 inches <laughs> that's poured unless you could buy a block that would do that yeah, I'm pretty sure that's poured right there that that window's sitting on I'm going to try to get that out in one piece don't know what I'm going to do with it, but it is inset in the block, so that could make things. I'm almost going to have to like see if I can come in here and knock that block out, and that thing will hopefully slide out this way because it's full show inset in the block. Um, but. I made sure I had enough garden hose to get down here to the barn because you got to run water to the saw. And that's the other thing I had to do after I got it. The guy I'm borrowing it from didn't have the little quick attach dealio that hooks into here so you can hook a garden hose to it because he apparently never got it. Um, so I had to kind of hillbilly this up, which actually didn't work that bad. Just took a garden hose repair end and it just happened to be a 5.8, basically the same size as a 5.8 hose in the the barb on the garden hose repair and happened to be roughly the same size as the OD on the little quick attach coupler here. So basically just took a 5.8 hose and slid it over there and hose clamped it and shouldn't leak. Um, actually, I had, this has been, shit, I was moving stuff out of the, out of the old storage barn. So it was back during that whole fiasco. So back last January time frame, February, whenever the hell I was doing all that. Um, Dad and I were, un we had moved a load over to mom and dad's and we had just pulled in the driveway and we're unstrapping stuff and a guy pulls in the driveway and apparently he was a, he was a subscriber and knew that I was going to get going on this project and he had dro he dropped me off a concrete saw. Um, it's an old partner. Um, 
but I tried screwing with it a little bit and it couldn't, I couldn't get it to start. He said he usually had, had to fiddle with it a little bit to get it to start. And I'm not that I don't appreciate it, but I, I don't want to have to screw with getting the saw to run for this little bit of work I got to do. So I went and borrowed this from a friend. Um, and this is actually a bigger saw, so it should make life a little easier. Hopefully the floor isn't any thicker than this. So maybe like three, four inches tops, hopefully. Um, it would appear, because when Dad was over here and we were looking at it, I just so happened to be standing here, like right about here, and he took his foot and tapped on the end of the trough, and I could feel it vibrating down here which is hopefully an indicator that they filled the manure trough most of the way with sand and then concreted over the top of it, hopefully. Um, so the main goal for today was to get everything around, get set up, and then actually start cutting tomorrow because it's actually getting kind of late in the day. But I did, I wasn't sure the best way to mark this because concrete work isn't exactly my thing, but I had this, uh, I believe this is actually a, a chisel for working with concrete block. Um, but I'm going to, I got my corners laid out. There's going to be one here, one there. I'm coming back five foot off the wall. And like I say, we're coming in one full block from the edge of the door. Um, so this will hopefully... Don't want to come in too far because then you got slope where you're trying to park stuff, which isn't good. But you don't want to go too far out and then you got a really steep ramp that the pain in the ass to get up and down. And this right here just seems kind of like a fairly happy medium because that should give you about 25 foot of flat here. And then, you know, the rest of the floor. And like I said, like I said before, most of this is going to be somewhat temporary because the eventual plan is just going to be to bust this whole floor out and drop the floor complete or drop the floor down closer to ground level so you don't get rid of the ramp altogether. But as I said before, until concrete comes down, that ain't happening. Um, so what I'm going to do is take this guy here. I'm going to set you here put the safety squints on i really need to dress this chisel and get that mushroom off of it but i don't think i've ever used this thing before it, this is one that i got a boat when i bought this place i got a boatload of random ass old tools that i found just cleaning it up like i really wish i'd have been doing youtube when i bought this place because if you could have seen the amount of shit crap crammed in the basement of this barn it was i spent probably better part of three weeks in the afternoons after work actually i might have been working third shift so it might have been afternoons before work but any, anyway i think i've spent better part of three weeks because basically what i would do is i would sort through the stuff and find anything that was good and worth keeping like tools or i found some a couple old calendars down here that were still in decent enough shape to warrant keeping and just some random odds and ends like knick-knacky stuff that I thought was worth keeping. And so I would sort through it, find the good stuff, and then I would bring my uh, trash dumpster down here, like the one that you leave out for the trash truck, bring that down here, fill it up, and then take it up, put it by the road. So it took me that, it took me like three dumpster loads of shit that had to do that and then i can't remember how much shit i hauled out of here with a loader and burn but it was just nuts and there was some shit that was probably would probably this day and age have been considered hazmat because the guy ran a plumbing business out of here so there was a bunch of like old shit from like the 50s 60s 70s 80s revolving around plumbing fixtures and paste and glue and anything that you could think of for plumbing and there's some like I say I'm pretty sure that there was some stuff now that you would have considered hazmat but I digress oh
But my main goal in doing this is just to give me a corner mark that can't be lost when you, if it dips, it can't be washed away by water or anything like that while I'm, while I'm cutting. The interesting thing is going to be keeping a line straight for that far because unfortunately that saw does not have a uh, and what I might end up doing before I actually plunge in and make the cut is just take the saw and make a scratch mark across there um, it'd be nice if I had a 2x4 long enough because then you could just lay the blade up against a 2x4 real quick, scratch a mark and then come back down, plunge your saw in, and make the cut, but you have something to follow. All right, so I had to go find, I had a, this is a leftover two by six from when they built my barn. It was long enough to make the span, so I just laid that across where my mark was and went through, and actually I took a shorter board, and went through and made, basically just made a dotted line along here so that I got something to follow. And then since this, is gonna, since this is gonna be my first time running a concrete saw, I was doing a little digging because they got this uh, decal here on the blade guard. It says, it tells you to push forward on the saw and cut on the downhill because the blade spins that direction and it says to make a cut here, which to me seemed kind of counter intuitive because you make the cut here the saw is going to want to climb and you'd think that would increase the chance of kickback you'd think you'd make the cut here so that it's pulling the saw down into the cut and so i was like well this is kind of weird so i went on the internets and did a little digging and sure as shit every safety video i found on using a concrete saw you cut off the front of the blade and push forward so that was a little like i say that was a little counterintuitive to me because of every other saw that you use, like you're using a skill saw, the blade counter rotates, that way it pulls the saw down towards the work. You use a chainsaw, you cut on the bottom of the blade, that way it pulls the saw towards the work. You'd think you'd cut here, that way it would pull the saw towards the work, but like I say, they... they... So that was, that was interesting to me, but if you're going to use it, you might as well use it right. So, but that is going to make it a little, I was trying to figure out, okay, how do you follow a line if your line is under the saw? Well, that makes it easier to follow the line, so. And I was right in my thinking because every video that I saw too said you make a shallow scribe cut so you got something to follow and then you just walk the saw down the, down the line, so simple enough. But probably going to make the outer cut and then probably make a cut this is also all depending on how thick this ends up being but probably make a cut here and a cut here to cut it into thirds maybe quarters depending on and if it's super duper thick we will i'll make another cut up the center and make the block smaller and then well, I might actually have to make, since I'm not going to be able to get that all the way up against the wall, I might have to make a cut as close as I can get to the edge of the wall, too, so I can jackhammer that out. Um, so that I got room to work to knock the wall out. And then I'd kind of like to, if I can get these out, in bigger chunks without having a jackhammer jackhammer them apart i'd like to go out i'd like to bring them out here and dig some of this out and basically just set them on the ground not that i'm gonna get anywhere because that they're only gonna you know they'll probably gain me this much but it's better than nothing right I'll have to move the 6-2 at some point as well because it's going to be in the way. 
And then once I get this opened up so that I can get stuff in here, then this can go back in a shed so that it's under cover. If you laid it down, this thing would damn near fit in here if you... If you laid it down on the elevators, but uh, then how the hell do you move it? So, with that being said, I think I am done for the day, um, and we will start the actual process of cutting this out tomorrow. Okay, it's Sunday morning, so I guess it's time to start cutting. Not much else to talk about. Um, I'm going to probably, without water real quick, just score a line. I know it's going to make a little bit of dust, but I think it'd be easier to see my mark or see what I'm doing without water. And then uh, after that, we'll plunge it and start cutting and see how things go.
It really didn't even take you that long. If I was cutting for 15 minutes, I'd be, I'd be impressed. I did find out yesterday, and that's the reason I ended up bringing these over. Yesterday, before I finished cleaning up down here, I fired that thing up just to make sure everything was going to work, and um, uh, just ran it dry. And just the sound of that blade spinning in the air made this whine that just cut right through your eardrums. It's like, okay. Normally, I'm not one for safety and PPE, but for that, I'm going to wear, especially working inside, I'm going to wear earmuffs. Which, even with them things on, they're, I mean, they're, those are cheap-ass Harbor Freight. Dad had them in the closet for something or other. They were still in the bag, but uh, even with those on, it's still loud, but it's tolerable. So, I guess... The next thing I got to do is probably run a cut along the wall, I would say. And then I'm probably going to have to score the doorway so that I can get that chunk out. and see where that gets us. cut along the wall and then I made a cut there I cut and I cut down uh, both sides of the manure trough this section right here appears to be thicker I'm not 100% sure that I got through it so I guess we'll find out this here I for sure got through it because uh, I thought I, I really thought I fucked up because I was making this cut and I got up to the wall and all of a sudden, wham, blade wedged. I was like, oh shit. But I was able to finagle it out. But it tells you how good a job they did leveling and compacting the floor if it's got, I mean, hell. That dropped an inch better when I got through it. And I'm also will be curious to see 
once we get this out of here, if they actually clean this barn out before they poured the concrete, or if they just like poured right over top of the manure, because there were several spots that I hit where all of a sudden I started pulling up black shit and it smelled like sewage. It's like, oh, I hope there's not manure under here. That would be lovely. So, with that being said, I guess the next step will be to grab the jackhammer and see if I can get this little rectangle here busted out. And then hopefully work my way back along the walls. There was something, and now that it's all muddy, you can't, well, you can't even see it right here. Because it, it broke away when the, this right here, this sec, their section here, was poured before the floor. But it's not a footer because there's another layer of block below it. So I guess we'll see when we start breaking it out. What exactly, I mean, without being able to see pictures of this when it was still set up for cattle with the stanchions and everything, you'll never know exactly what the floor looked like. But at this point, all we can do is pretty much speculate. But anyway, I'm going to get the saw cleaned up and get some of my mess cleaned up. And then we'll uh, get a cord down here and break the jackhammer out. Okay, I got the slurry out of the way. Got my mess cleaned up for the most part. Got some more comfortable foot attire on. I figured I'd wear my muck boot while I was making that or doing all the cutting. That way I didn't get a bunch of concrete slurry on my red wings. And I was fiddly fucking with this square here, and it drops a lot more than an inch. It's damn near to the bottom of the slab. I tried prying it up out of there because I wanted to see what was underneath it, but I can't do it by myself. If I wasn't if I wasn't scared of the way it's teetering and pinching the blade, I'd take the saw and saw it in half and make it more manageable, but I don't want to have that thing get I don't want to pinch the blade and screw it up, so if it was a real rental, I mean, you might just, but if we're borrowing it, I'm borrowing it from a friend, so. But anyway, got the jackhammer out. This is a lot bigger than I remember it being. Um, so we'll get this square busted out and see what that gets us. Might actually be able to set you right out here on the picker. Maybe. Let's play up to the world. That ought to work, I think. Well, see how this busts up. This concrete is kind of... You can tell it was hand-mixed, hand-poured concrete because it is very... It's not very consistent, and it's fairly soft. Things running slow. breaks off along that. Oh, 
All right, I finally got this all broke out. It was a chore. Um, from here over, it was pretty much all concrete. And then from here to here, once I got down below the floor where the floor was poured, I ran into the original rock foundation. And that hammer doesn't have enough ass to break rock. So once I figured out what I was up against, I was able to work the mortar joints out from around the rock. And then if you hammer it on the rock enough, it would shake itself loose and you can take a pry bar and pop it out of the hole and finish busting all the mortar out. But, and then that's the tile that went through the foundation that would have originally drained the manure troughs. There's one there. Uh, seems like there's, there's one there inside that mound of dirt. Um, it seems like there's one or two further down. And then there's one that came out of the milk house. There was a floor drain in there. Um, but it's kind of crazy to think that rock was sitting right here in this hole right there. I mean, obviously this rear wall has been changed over the years because cinder block wasn't even invented yet when this... Well, I don't think it was. Let's check real quick. Seems like cinder block didn't come around till just before or in between World War World War One and World War Two. When were cinder blocks? Invented. The first hollow concrete block was designed in 1890. Okay, so they were on the drawing board, but since this was built in 1891, I highly doubt it, that they would have been used widely. Um, so, I mean, this back wall has obviously been modified throughout this barn's lifespan. So it's very, it's, I mean, there's always a possibility that this rock has been, or this has been changed at some point. But there's also the likelihood that that rock has not been out of this foundation since this barn was built in 1891, which is crazy to think about. That's been in there over 100 years, and we're finally just knocking it out. But the reason I said... This has most likely been changed as dad and I were looking at it. And dad happened to notice on this post, there's this mortise joint. Um, and got to, or got to wondering, we saw that. And then he, we, he saw when we were looking at this uh, red brick corner, this has still got a wooden post right there. And then they had a piece of two by four laid into the brick here. Um, so we were wondering if there was a very good possibility that at one point, and I don't know if we'll see it once we get this wall knocked out or not, if we'll see any more cutouts like this in the bottom of that beam but we were wondering if at one point this whole back wall was wood all the way to the ground and when they updated the barn and added the milk house because the milk house was obviously added when the back wall was done because the block is the same um we were wondering when the barn was updated to a modern more modern milking system um if the back wall had start had gotten pretty rotten from being in the manure and having cows rub up against it throughout the years and whatnot so they knocked the wall out and bricked this back wall but we were wondering because of this which would have been a girt going across if this was originally wood all the way down to the ground and the siding came all the way down um 
so that's kind of a possibility of what might have happened here because this is obviously the original face of this wall um but anyway a little bit of possible history of the barn i wish i could find pic i wish i could find aerial photos of this farm from the 50s but so far i've not been able to locate any or even well, yeah, most of the area, most of the aerial farm photos that you see start popping up are 1950s and newer. So, but it'd be cool if I could find an aerial photo of this place from that period back when they were still milking, just to see what it looked like. And then supposedly back here, um, toward the field, because obviously this was going to be pasture for the barn, but so somewhere back here there was an apple orchard too at one point. Um, but anyhow, with that kind of out of the way, I'm going to probably stop where I'm at because, um, I'm not going to do it right away because I still want the door to function so we can block this hole off for the time being. But, um, when I get this board off of here, I'll take the saw and score right here along there so I could bust it off square. Um, but obviously with everything in the way, I can't get the saw in there right now. And then this block broke. I think it was actually broke already. I don't think it broke when I started hammering on it because it just fell out way too easy. Um, but hopefully I can locate some of this block new. Um, the part that's going to be interesting is it's only half round it's only round on one corner and it's square on this corner i don't know if that's a thing anymore or if they only have full round block and that being said i also noticed i got a broken block here that's going to need replaced so and then dad was also thinking about it some or when we get this part done as we come over here because this post is obviously getting rotten and it's still bearing weight um, not that it's going to be bearing a crap ton of weight. Well, I don't know, the way that mortar's falling, it might be bearing more weight than you'd think. But anyway, um, getting in here and jacking this corner up a little bit and getting this beam out of here and busting this door or, or door out and pouring a footer here and then blocking or getting cinder block and blocking this corner up and narrowing this doorway up so you can put in a standard man door. And then while you've got all that shit out of the way, you could also come in here and grind out this mortar that's falling out and go back in and re-tuck point it to shore that corner back up so the rock doesn't fall out. Because this corner of the barn's obviously settled because the foundation is cracked right here which it was probably weakened somewhat when they knocked this door in because the way this is all cut um this wall clearly before the milk house was added on was one piece this this hole wasn't here so anyhow um i think as far as this work i'm gonna call it a day and I'm going to go get the keys and see if we can get the 6-2 started. And we're going to move it out of the way. i got to figure out where, where I want to park it. Um, so I don't want it up in the driveway. But I need it out the way. In all reality, it would be nice to have the picker out of the way. But I think I'm just going to leave it there because I want to leave it on the concrete. So I'm going to figure out where I want to park this and go get the keys. And we'll see if we can move it. All right, I had to run over to mom and dad's and grab some diesel. Now let's see if the old girl will come to life for me. Cycle the glow plugs a few times here. Come on. Oh. Come on. Oh, she wants to. You 
You can't ether it because it ether locks real easy. I've tried one time. Yeah, you don't do that. <laughs> Oh, you know you want a girl. Come on. I guarantee you if I turn the camera off, it'd fire right up because that's just, that's just the way my luck goes while trying to cold start stuff on camera. I don't think I've, I haven't started it since I put it here. There, she picked up all eight. That a girl. She's old and she's tired, but she's loyal. With a low tire. Hell yeah. All right. I really need to do a little bit of work to this thing to get it where I can drive it. At least just get it. get it on the road even if I don't necessarily slate it so I can just drive it back and forth to mom and dad's and like keep the cobwebs out of it Brakes working. What else? Get the lockouts in the hubs in the front hubs fixed. Basically, the whole fuel system needs done up to the pump because the tank's junk, the lines are junk, the, the lift pump's junk. Because right now it's running off of a little electric pump off of a combine and a one gallon lawnmower tank. I'm gonna sneak this back a little further. needs a bed put on it. it it most definitely needs a bed put on it. i'm not worried about the stuff in the cab or the rust in the cab and whatnot but having a bed that you don't have to worry about falling off the truck that's generally pretty nice but there's other it always comes down to there's other projects that are more important keep saying I'm gonna work on it and it just ever something else always comes up but I really need to get on this at some point before it just turns completely to shit all right with that out of the way you shouldn't have much issue working on getting this wall knocked out 
I did do some looking knowing that I had at least two busted block. I showed you that showed you that guy there that's gonna need replaced and then that one broke and I'm gonna guess that the ones below it are gonna break. So probably three or four block. Um, I did look and Menards has them. These single single round edge blocks. Um, so I guess with that being said, I'm I'm still gonna try to save these. I'll I'll see what I can do with them. Um, I actually went while I was at Dad's getting fuel. I found the tuck pointing blade that I bought a couple years ago because I had the when I bought this place the chimney was pretty rough, the grout in it, and I had to or mortar, not grout. Um, so I had to take the or retuck point the whole chimney on the house, and then I think I ended up taking like 12 inches off the top because the chimney cap had deteriorated and some of the block around the top was broke and then the first section of chimney liner was broke so i had to replace a section of chimney liner i took i think i took four or five rows of block off the top and then relayed the and then relayed two layers of block put a chimney cap on it and replace that liner but god i i don't know how people restore brick houses because i tuck pointed that chimney and that was enough that was enough of that for me I couldn't imagine having to do a whole damn house. But anyway, since I got that, that works really good for taking the mortar out. So, um, I'll see what it, I'll see how hard they come out. If they come out fairly easy, I'll save them. If it's one of them deals where they're going to be a pain in the ass to get out, then... I will just bust them out and obviously I'm going to have to do what I can here to say keep from busting these blocks that are staying. So I'm going to have to work harder at it here, which I'll be able to get all the way around for the most part. The only place that will become an issue is the center web and the block that mortared across, which I'll be able to get in you know, yay far on both sides. So hopefully it'd be one of them things where you get get everything out and then take a sledgehammer on the end and just kind of go whack and it'll bust some mortar loose and everything will be fine, but it could also bust the block. So we'll just have to see how it works. But that's probably going to be this week's project after work is whittling away with that. And I'll have to get the 1600 over here so that we got something to haul the crap away this is where i wish i had a it would be nice i think it'd be cool to have one just for i don't know just because it'd be cool to have one have an old uh, one of them old belt drive jaw crushers for crushing rock just so you have something to belt the tractor up to and then you end up with a bunch of clean concrete like this with no rebar in it dump that through that jaw crusher and get it down to size and then just put it on the driveway and be done with it because hell i gotta believe that concrete crushes easier than solid rock and then the other thing i'm gonna have to do this week actually I'm gonna have to get the wall out so we can get measurements so i know what all i gotta get um get material over here for make or for building the slider <laughs> So we can get a door on it once the wall is out and then that will also determine if i need to go back a little further for the ramp or not um because obviously you don't want it too steep because then anything that's got low ground clearance trying to break it over the edge you're gonna get hung up so but that being said because it's going to be steeper here because hell you're almost once you get over to here you're almost a full block shorter than you are over here so it's going to be steeper on this side i don't know it's it's going to be interesting if nothing else might have to take the ramp and form some of it outside of the door a little bit 
So, but we got to get the wall out, get everything. Getting the hole in the wall is going to determine how far or what all we got to do here. So, with that being said, I think I'm going to call her a day. I got to go look in the barn and see if there's a way that I can finagle everything to get the 1600 inside while it's living over here and go from there so um i guess that's it for this one we'll catch you guys on the next one